headlines. So yeah. One of the headlines that yep. was missed, I think, is on Julian Assange. Um, Julian Assange is, of course, facing life term if extradited. And that's kind of the argument that his witness is making for him. As you know, uh, what they are going after Julian Assange for is basically the video that showed a Reuters agent getting murdered. And the, co um, the person who's in that helicopter, not necessarily knowing that guy was a journalist as he was killing that particular guy. Well, when that video was released, Chelsea Manning released that video. Chelsea Manning gets 35 years in prison under a military court, tortured, and basically eventually let out by Obama. The issue, oddly enough, wasn't so much that the person was killed. It was more so that you showed it. Now, Obama wouldn't go further than going after Assange because he understood that there were certain problems with in regards to press. Meaning, if you're going to go after Assange for basically doing what journalists do, then what does it mean for Chuck Todd, who's not a journalist, or Richard Maddow, who's not a journalist, or any of these other people who pretend to be journalists on TV? What does it mean for those people? Um, it means, basically, that uh, the press in the United States is under assault, which is why you get Richard Maddow, who actually comes out and for the first time in her life says something good about Assange, but only to protect her own neck. Right now, they're threatening him with between, I think his person said 20 years to basically 175 years in prison. Punitive. We can go after him with our laws, but the protections don't apply. That doesn't make sense at all. At the end of the day, you have Assange being stuck and kept in that British court. Uh, basically, not necessarily all that much reported in the United States, but definitely something that you should pay attention to, considering the information that he has been able to get out um, over the course of his time as a publisher. So we try to cover Assange. Um, I think last time we even had people in the UK covering Assange. But, you know, this is something to follow. And whether or not he gets extradited is going to be a major, major thing. But what it looks like now is they're trying to roll the process along. And it doesn't seem to be all that much fair from the standpoint of Assange and his legal team, especially from the standpoint of his own personal health. So let's do this. Let's take a break. So you guys are listening to Fault Lines with Thomas and Stranahan. We'll be back in a moment. So I'm going to go to you in just a second. I actually wanted to respond to, though, to the Assange stuff here. Um, one quick thing. We were talking about Assange last week. You just brought him up. And I think this is partly because somebody was errantly going after you on Twitter. I saw this. Some random person was attacking you on Twitter. But you've been talking about Assange for years, Demuro. You've oh, been talking yeah. about, like, you were part of the Unity for Vigil, uh, Unity, Unity for uh, 4J Vigil going on back in the day. You've been talking about him for a long time. So it was weird to, weird to see that Susie happen. Dawson even came out and said, yeah, Jamal has been talking about Assange for, for a while. Look, I get it. Everybody has their thing that um, they have as their pet thing you know it's like this is the thing that they cling to um like room death um we are a new show we're gonna do a lot of stories and it's all just gonna be part and parcel to one of those stories and if i'm being honest beyond being part parcel to one of those stories before i ever got this channel um before i started doing any of this i was covering assange so you know but no it wasn't for a twitter thing i actually i hadn't paid too much mind to that one uh, someone, one of my subscribers was like, "Why? how are you guys not covering Assange? Why aren't you not covering Assange? And like you said, we covered Assange literally last week. And more likely than not, we would have covered him this week also. But it, that's fine. Yeah, we I, very likely will. Yeah. Yeah, we, no, we had Taylor Hudak. She was live. She was at the trial live live, uh, live in London from the, from the hearing there, the extradition hearing ongoing. Anyway, um, one quick note on this. We've got Brave. I just I felt the need to make this point. I'm stupid and, and like to say things sometimes. Um, with Assange, uh, another way of looking at this, yeah, they're angry at him. Journalists do this kind of stuff all the time. Heck, this the, the last four years have been one cavalcade of journalists releasing anonymously sourced information yes. after another. So yes. One string. And you know that you know that they're cultivating those sources. You know that they're cultivating the kinds of connections that will lead people to reveal secrets, you know, many of which I'm sure they shouldn't be revealing legally. Um, and the, the journalists do that all the time. It's just, it's just standard practice. What worries people about Assange is the magnitude and the efficacy with which his organization has revealed secrets. Right there, and what's right most there. what's damning about this, and why is it why normal? It so sad that this is, Wait, just interrupt one well, second. Is it thing, normal journalistic practice? Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Go for it. 
it's just it's just this and then we've got to get to brave and I'll, I'll give it back to you but it's just this they have and this is a sad thing and we should keep talking about WikiLeaks and praising them when we can because they you know they've done a lot of good work the sad thing is that if you go to the WikiLeaks website it has been almost a year now since they've last posted something it had been about uh, it's been slow it's been a lot slower with Julian gone and that goes with it and that's intentional I know but that's why it's so important to, to, to talk about him and that's why we'll continue to do to do so so anyway tomorrow I'll take it is this the skew that we were talking about before? Like, you know, the what is the rational action that you would expect from your government in this scenario? Well, your place is on fire. Uh, maybe mobilize village or mobilize whatever you need to. Put that fire up. Uh, what is your government doing? Mm, not much of that. <laughs> you have a COVID crisis. What is the rational action of your government to do? You know, Defense Protection Act. The president should use all powers at his disposal to get X done. Not so much. Like, I'm saying it's the skew. I wonder if this is something similar. So, like, you made the point that says, well, he's doing what journalists do. They go, they work with sources, they put that information out. But is that what journalists do? I mean, any information that's put out is put out for somebody ends. It's not necessarily being put out for public consumption in the sense that this is what the public needs to know. It's more so put out that this is what the public needs to know in order for us to create an argument to keep troops in Afghanistan because those Taliban's were getting paid by the Russians to kill Americans. Like, is it really it's journalism? Right, exactly. Whereas no. Assange was putting out, this is what the public needs to know. And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's journalism, but that's quote unquote journalism. Not the journalism of the Chuck Todd's of the world. Does that make sense? It seems like maybe that's the it skew, does. right? Maybe the fact that Assange can put that information out, that information is factual. This is behind the scenes. This is what they're actually saying. And they're like, whoa. Yes, that's journalism, but that's journalism done in too real of a way. We need to go back to this managed journalism. Yeah, it it throws that 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 contrast really puts journalism into harsh relief. That's the thing you used that you you said quote unquote journalism. I think the the, uh, the this habit of saying quote unquote X, you know, quote unquote journalism, quote unquote government, whatever, it's trite to do that, but it's actually pretty damn effective. If it, you know. As far as it goes, these are the. Well, I don't know what else to call it. These are the appearances of things. Yeah. These are these are these are no longer these are vacant realities that only prove to deceive and seduce. They do not actually provide. You know, it's 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 fake food. It's 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 that idea getting across. It's it's uh, bread filled with uh, bread filled with shaved wood. It's it's that. Because <laughs> anyway, we've got we've got to go to calls. I think we've got a bunch of them, and uh, we called for them. So I don't want to deny them. Again, the number is two zero two five two one thirteen twenty. Brave, calling in from Atlanta. Brave, you're on. What's going on? Hey, good morning, guys. Um, first, I want to say i um, really happy to have Jamal back. I really enjoyed uh, Garland Nixon uh, last week and week before, so I ended up subscribing to him and listening to his show from there, but I'm really happy to have Jamal back. Thanks, man. Um, your, your conversation on um, Julian Assange just now um, adds to what I really called in about, which was about the media and um, the Because I've, I've called about it before, but um, the pos any, 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 not possibly, I'm sorry, any, any, um, any strategies for, or, or conceiving of some strategy to go after the, uh, the media, uh, cable media in, in a legal way, in a legal way. Um, I think that, I think that when, for, for example, when Tulsi Gabbard was running and she brought suit against, um, not only, uh, Hillary Clinton, but, uh, Google, that was, that was huge. And I, and any YouTuber, I, I myself am a, I'm a small time YouTuber, but, um, any YouTuber color and color, any form of politics knows that even YouTube now is stifling uh, or trying to stifle and suppress uh, our, our voices. Um, I, like even uh, some people I follow, I don't, I don't see them come to my, in my uh, subscription stream as much anymore, and to include them all. So um, I, I, what, I, what I keep calling in about is, and I hate to be a dead horse, but um, what are our legal way? What, what, are, what is a legal way that we could take mass action, like a civil action or something like that, against the uh, corporate media. It, it, I feel like there has to be some kind of way. I'm not, I'm not a lawyer, obviously, but I feel like there has to be some kind of way because um, they are propagandizing the American people. They, they, they aren't doing their jobs. You, you know what I'm saying? So there has to be some form. And um, What's their job? Wait, 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 wait. Brave, 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 brave. Wait, what's their job? Well, the idea of, well, I don't even know, but the idea of journalism is to be uh, the voice, not only, not only, the check and balance on government, right? Um, but that's not what we're getting. Our, our media has become uh, a, another arm of our government. But we right? have, wait, brave, brave, uh, wait, hold on. McDonald's sells hamburgers. Now, 
regardless of what you think their job is, they're giving you a hamburger. It has to taste good. That's it. It's not going to be nutritious. It's not going to be the greatest thing on the planet. They're going to try to get the cheapest resources possible because they're trying to make a profit. The entire point of the expert, uh, of the enterprise is profit, meaning the stupid human trick that they use to get that profit secondary to the process. The news is corporate media. Basically, they're paid to do and give you information. Um, it's the same process. It's a stupid human trick that gets you a product, yes. But again, the whole point of it is not necessarily that product. I hope you understand what I mean. So when they're going out there and they're giving you a perspective of the world, it's their perspective of the world. Um, and like if you're talking about Twitter, if you're talking about Facebook, if you're talking about uh, Google, they're private entities. Now, as private entities, there may be certain legal arguments to try to get them to do X or Y, so fair enough. But at the end of the day, though, how do you stop um, YouTube from making choices that are in the best interest of YouTube, even if they're against your interest of putting out content? I, I guess that's... go for it. Sorry, I'm, I'm not necessarily target. I'm not necessarily speaking so much about um, because you're right. Uh, YouTube, uh, Google, those are private entities. Although there, there are some regulations that can be put on them, but right. I, I think that, that's going on a slippery slope. I'm speaking more specifically to um, to network broadcasting, like the corp, the corporate media, like uh, as far as it goes like uh, CNN, MSNBC, even Fox News, uh, PBS, th those those types of things. Um, there, there was a time where we had like um, was it was it was it FAA, FCC, whatever the case is. There, 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 there's regulations that I think that that should be that that can be placed on them because. There was a time where they had to adhere to certain things, and those things have been rolled back. And then, not not to mention, I called in before. I think it was like last week. I called in and mentioned um, the Telecommunications Act, yeah, um, where, where, whereas uh, it allowed the, it allowed these uh, these all these different um, companies to come to to, to become um, to become a monopoly basically under under one company. In, in the way that I think it's Comcast that owns like uh, uh, was it uh, uh, CNN or MSNBC? I'm sorry. So that, that's what I'm saying. That, in order, in order, what, as, as, as these entities grow um, and, 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 and under corporate control, then we lose. We lose power and, and any chance of getting any kind it's of... It's absolutely... Wait, wait, brave. Brave. Are we, Let's do this as a topic. Stuff. I'm not cutting you off for any other reason than that we've got to move on to other calls. Real quick, you're talking about the Communications Decency Act of 1996. You're talking about the Telecommunications Act. I'm, I'm pretty damn sure that's what you're referring to. For those listening, if you haven't heard of it, go check it out. He's talking about the consolidation of uh, the media under a, a very small number of corporations, really under the, the hands of a very small number of people, is another way of looking at this. But right. we've got other calls. Let's go to them. Karen.